Hey, Ambitious Professionals, it's Linda Rayner of lindarayner.com, guiding you to a career and life you'll truly enjoy. And today I have an awesome person to talk to you about. His name is Chris. He's here to share his story with you, to tell you a little bit more about how he went from someone who was in an industry, he was in the construction industry doing work that he wasn't entirely happy about, to now working in a job, in a career that he's much more excited about, that he can see himself doing in the long term, and he's in the field and industry that he wants to stay in. So... Ready to get the job you want? Top Notch Interview is coming soon. For more info and free training, head to jointni.com. Chris, thank you so much for joining me here today. Hey, thanks for having me, Linda. So Chris, can you share with us a little bit about your story and what happened after college, after university, when you graduated? Tell us a little bit about the job that you were in and, and what was going on. Okay, so uh, I was very blessed to get a job after college. It was your typical nine to five working in a construction company and essentially worked there for almost five to six years. But not going to lie, once I hit that fifth year or so, I felt like I was kind of doing repetitive things, doing stuff that wasn't really challenging me. And I felt like there should be more to this. Why do I feel like I'm stuck? So then pretty much I quit that company and then I was like trying to find another job essentially but I realized how hard it was to actually find another job. So then I I felt like I was stuck. And then a a bit of a background for me is people in my family that can really guide me. So then I was looking online for a bunch of stuff and then your name came up. So, and then here we are today. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. So let's talk about that. So you, you quit your job after you were unhappy in it and you started looking for a new one. How long was that search going for? What were the results that you were getting? I'm not gonna lie when I first quit it was very like I'll find a job I have experience that kind of thing and then I really started to pick it up after about four to five months I was like okay I I need money (laughs) you know like you need money that kind of thing and then I'm still doing my MBA so that was another thing like I don't want to go back into loans you know like I just paid it off for my undergrad that kind of thing so it was really like those types of things that like really kept pushing me and then I was I was like hey I need help like worst case scenario you need to ask for help if you don't have, you know, that kind of guidance. Yeah. So did you get interviews while you were searching or no, not even? Uh, I, I, I did get interviews, but it was more of like phone calls, like screenings, and then nothing else. That was kind of just like, and it, those were very rare, I would say. Those were like, for every 10 applications, I would get like maybe one back. Oh, got it. And so overall, how many applications did you send? I'll be honest, I lost count. I I send a lot. I send a lot out. So can you talk a little bit about what sparked you to reach out to me to apply for my standout Get Hired program? What motivated you to do that? Uh, Well, the whole, I need a job. (laughs) But I, I think it was more like I was having trouble doing it on my own. And I had no one to ask for help. So, you know, I was just like, well, my next best friend is Google. (laughs) And then uh, you you actually came up. So I was like, all right, might as well ask her for help. Because, you know, like the worst case is you ask someone for help and it's just like, okay, well, their advice wasn't helpful. So next. (laughs) Yeah. And so what do you think that you really needed help with? Like, what were you struggling with, do you feel? I felt like six, seven years ago, uh, how to find a job was a lot different now than today, 2019. LinkedIn wasn't really big back then. You know, Glassdoor, Indeed, all those things weren't really like relevant before it was really, you hand write a letter to the place or you, you like call them up or they go to your school for, for job fairs. Like, I mean, they still probably do that. Now it's more like everything's online, I feel like. Yeah, everything is online. So you feel a lot smaller and more invisible. Yeah, because just because I wasn't used to that process, I was like, all right, I already have a job. Well, I'm good. You know, like I don't have to worry about these different processes to find a job. Yes. Okay. And so how, how did it go? Like as we work together, I mean, I know how it went, but can you share (laughs) with the audience a little bit about, you know, what were your big ahas or what you realized and what you were able to improve on? Yeah. So it was really a lot of uh, investing in yourself. Obviously you weren't going to do the job for me or you were going to help me, but like if I didn't put the effort in, it would be so much harder. (laughs) I feel like, so a lot of it was realizing like, oh, wow, there's different ways of applying for jobs, different ways of uh, reaching out to people. There's like that type of thing that I learned while I was 
doing this journey. Awesome. And so how did you feel before and how do you feel now in terms of how you feel about yourself as a professional, just having gone through this process? A lot of it was, I already knew a lot of it. It was just like like, like being exposed to it again kind of thing. And you really helped me with that. I guess like with the interviews, I felt like I already knew how to do an interview, but it was more of reaching out and applying for that job. That was like the first step for me. And then like everything else, it was just like brushing up on those skills that I feel like I already have. Yeah, I agree. I think that when you came into this program, you were already really self-aware and you were already aware of what you needed to do, but it was really just refining it, if that makes sense. Yeah, because I did Um, do like interviews before you. I did do like all those, but it was more like, oh, what's happening? I didn't get it. Like that kind of thing. Yeah. I I kind of forgot like, oh, you should follow up with them after the interview. Like that type of stuff. Like it was just like those small things, you know, I forgot because it's been like five, six years. <laughs> mm-hmm. So Chris, when we went through this program, I know that partway through, you started getting results almost immediately and you ended up with multiple job offers. So let's talk about those. You know, the first job offer that you got, what was it? What was it about? And how did it help you with the current job that you're in? Uh, so uh, I got a really good offer with a uh, like a, a fast-paced technology company, which is kind of more what I wanted instead of construction. And the, the only downside was it was a contract position. So it was kind of like a trial period, I guess, what have you. But like it was the first step. You know, I was just like, I can't not have a job. So I'm going to take this. Cause, and plus, it was more towards my field. It was more towards what I wanted to do. It, like it, everything just checked the boxes. So I, I really just I had to go for it. And then actually during that time when I was working there, that's when my permanent position came up. So it was just like, wow, this is, this is, it's working. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so what was that job again? It was like a business analyst job. Correct. Correct. So it was like really helping with, I guess, people getting used to their in-house system kind of thing and really documenting the process and like, what were they having troubles with? Uh, how can we make it better for this group department? That kind of thing. So I concentrated more with like the accounts payables or like the finance people. So that was like more what I wanted. Right. So for everyone who's watching, essentially what this contract opportunity did for you was it was sort of that transition. It allowed you to switch from a completely different industry, construction, doing work that was more clerical to then doing more business analysis work in a more technology environment because it was in a technology company. And then now you're able to do the work that you've been wanting to do full time in a large company. All right. Amazing. Amazing. You've been in your new job now for how long has it been? Several weeks, a couple months. Yeah. I, I was like two and a half weeks, I'd say. Okay. Let's say two weeks. Let's, let's, let's say two weeks. <laughs> it's been two weeks. Awesome. So how, how have these two weeks been? Like, how do you enjoy your coworkers? How do you, how do you feel now about yourself? It's good. It's good. So like uh, uh, one thing that I wanted to was to have like younger coworkers, you know, just people to talk to every day about, you know, just random pop culture stuff. And I have that. So that's pretty cool. And then also like I wanted fast vibes still because construction was, it's pretty fast paced. So I wanted to keep that same vibe going. I also have that too. So it was very like all the check marks were going off <laughs> essentially. Oh, that's good. And moving forward, you know, no matter where, whether you stay here for the really long term or you end up moving on to another company, do you feel that you have the confidence now to do what you need to do in order to sell yourself and get the job that you want for when you're ready for that next level? Yeah. Yeah. And then plus if I'm struggling, you know, you're always there now too. So that's the the, the plus part. <laughs> Yes, exactly. So I want to ask you, Chris, because, you know, a lot of people in my audience, when they watch the videos like this, where I'm interviewing successful clients, they're always curious about really, is this something that you would recommend? Is this something that you would encourage somebody else to take on? So for someone who's struggling, who's been unemployed or who's employed, but they haven't had that luck in finding a new job, what would you say to them? What would your guidance be? Well, I mean, the big thing for me was because obviously, like I said before, having no job, it's a little hard when you have like the the income doesn't come in anymore so when I was looking up for you I was I got to invest in myself do I want to really do this or keep struggling and not making money or just suck it up invest in yourself for the smaller term and then have someone that finally can help you because like I said before I didn't really have a someone that I can ask for help 
because you know everyone in my family they're in the medical field <laughs> and then plus like they like they're, they're, they can't relate to me who's in the business IT field kind of thing so it was it's really harder for me to ask for guidance like they, they couldn't just really be like oh you know you do this if you really want to like move up in IT like that kind of thing got it so can you tell us what you would say to someone who's watching like I said before, like for me, when I quit my job, I obviously wasn't making money. So actually what I did, I didn't tell you this, but I did a, a, a small side gig just so I had the funds for the, this thing. So I did, I delivered pizza actually for three, three nights, literally only three nights. And it actually gave me enough money for this program. I was just like, you know, like I'm going to suck it up small. And plus like that was at night. So it wasn't like it interviewed during the day where most people are nine to five. They're looking like at resin. So right. I, I just sucked it up for three nights, just like literally just delivered pizzas, made enough money so that I can invest in this program in, in myself. I was like, you know, once I finally get that, the, the pizza gig can go away. <laughs> I had no idea that you did that. That's awesome. I mean, it just shows yeah. the level of commitment that you had. And, you know, you were so positive throughout the program too. And I'm so happy for the results that you've gotten. So for somebody else who is struggling and thinking that they may not be able to afford or invest in themselves, what do you say? Do you think they should also just go deliver pizzas or what, what, what words of advice or wisdom do you have for them? I mean, there, there's, there's other ways to, you know, I guess like find the funds to do it. But yeah, like if you're really, really, really struggling and you feel like you're at a dead end, I feel like this is a good opportunity because at the end of the day, you are investing in yourself. I feel like no one else can do it for you kind of thing. I agree. Exactly. Okay, Chris. So just any final words for the individuals that are watching this right now and hearing your story, what would you say to them? You know, if they're currently struggling and they're not finding the job that they want, what would you say to them? For me, it was really a find your big why. Why do I feel stuck and how can I get out of this kind of thing? So for, for me personally, like I, like I said before, like I was like, uh, well, I feel like I could be doing so much more than just what I was doing before. And plus, my, my parents, they were very, they, they, they're immigrants. So it was like one of those, like, oh, they gave me a lot kind of thing. So I know I can do more than this because they gave me a lot. And I know I can give them a lot back. So really finding out your big why. Why do I want to, like, be in a better position than I am now? So then for me, it was like just finding other ways to just really, I guess, find a job. <laughs> and then your name came up. Because like I said before, I didn't really have a coach or just like someone, a mentor, someone to like really ask for it career advice because you know my parents are they're, they're, they're not in the business field they're more like blue collar I guess workers what have you yeah you know I can relate to that because my parents are also blue collar workers and a lot of the audience I think are the same where their parents are blue collar workers and you know they're the first generation that has had the opportunity to graduate from post-secondary and to take on professional jobs but at the same time it's about asking for help even when you get to that level, if you're not able to get to the role or the career or industry that you want to get into and you find that there are things that you need to improve on, then it is about asking for help, which is what you were able to do. And I'm so glad that you're able to do it and that you can share your success story with us today. So Chris, I just want to say thank you so much for sharing your experience with everyone here. I think you're going to be super motivating and inspiring to everybody. So yeah, thanks for, for sharing your, your story and your time. All right. Now, for those of you who are currently in a similar position that Chris was in, you are struggling with finding the job that you want. You haven't been able to get the interviews that you want, or you haven't been able to do well in your interviews, and you are ready for that one-on-one -on -one professional guidance from me then feel free to reach out. Head on over to my website, lindarainer.com slash standoutgethired. Read through the page, fill in the application form. And from there, if it seems that we're a potential match, one of my team members will be reaching out to you directly. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Ready to get the job you want? Top Notch Interview is coming soon. For more info and free training, head to joinTNI.com.